Hello, everyone. Welcome to our webinar with Dr. Kimberly Butterwick. Hello. Hi. Okay, I'll Hi. give everyone a couple minutes to get situated while I push this to go live on Facebook as well. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be getting started in just a moment with Dr. Kimberly Butterwick. She is speaking today about a very interesting topic to many of us about wrinkles and sagging skin around the mouth. So I'll let you guys all get acclimated on the bottom of your screens should be a few options for um, commenting or chatting and a Q&A, which is where you can put a question that you might have. So you are welcome to start populating in any questions right now and Dr. Butterwick will answer as many as she can at the end. Pushing live on Facebook. Okay. Could you introduce yourself? Yes. Okay. We are now live on Facebook. So welcome everyone. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining us. I am very excited that today we have Dr. Kimberly Butterwick here. She's going to be speaking about wrinkles and sagging skin around the mouth area. She's going to be speaking about injectables, lasers, and different contouring devices to help rejuvenate that area. Dr. Butterwick is a very highly esteemed board certified dermatologist. She's been with cosmetic laser dermatology since the beginning, since we started. And we're very honored to have her still in our practice and today for you all to learn a little bit from her expertise. So now I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Butterwick. Hi, do you mean you want me to start right now? Are we ready? Yes, please. Okay, good. All right, well, as she said, I'm Dr. Kimberly Butterwick and I welcome you all to this webinar. During the pandemic, there's a little extra time and this, we thought we'd use it to educate our patients but fortunately, now we're actually open, so we can actually now treat patients. And people are so happy about that, and I'm so happy to see everyone. And I'm glad you all can join us today, too, on this webinar. Now, what I'm going to talk about are wrinkles and sagging around the mouth. Um, these are some of the companies I work for, but no one's paid me to speak to you today. Um, and this is our agenda for today. I'm going to talk about the causes of um, these wrinkles and sagging around the mouth. And then I'm going to talk about some of the different uh, treatments from lasers to fillers and so forth. And at the end, we're going to talk and have some questions so you can ask anything you want within reason. <laughs> now, this problem of lower facial wrinkles and laxity, you use the word sagging, Physicians use the word laxity, means the same thing. But this is one of the top concerns of my patients. I would say every other patient says, can't you do something to lift up the sagginess around the mouth or deal with these wrinkles? It's a very common problem with aging. And so that's why I thought I better talk about this at this webinar. Now, why do we age in um, these different ways? Aging is not just on one level, it's a, we call it a multi-level process. So there's superficial changes, there's deep changes, and on the surface we see pigment, texture, and the fine wrinkling, the smoker's lines type of thing. And when you age on a subsurface level deeper than the skin, then you get the deeper folds, the sagging, um, and the changes in the facial shape, the redistribution of the soft tissue. So first I'll talk about how we get these etched in lines. These are, and you can see in these pictures, very common lines, these vertical lines, these lines around the mouth that go to the side. Some are horizontal, some are vertical, some are diagonal. So unfortunately we can get all sorts of lines around the mouth. And these are often, um, they form from repetitious muscle expression such as when we smoke, which hopefully no one around here smokes, I know I don't, um, but um, even drinking from straws can cause this. And they get, these lines get really etched in and they're actually hard to treat. We have limited treatment options 
um, to get these as good as we want. But we definitely can help a ton in getting rid of these lines. So the causes, as I said, were this repetitive expression and um, also drinking with straws. So if you do that, don't, don't drink out of straws and don't um, you know, like drink out of real narrow bottles. So that's sort of bad or chew a lot of gum. People who use their mouth a lot will get this. But some women tell me they never smoked, they never um, had any sort of um, drinking out of straws or any sort of funny movement. They weren't whistlers, but they still have the lines. And I think that's just the unique way their mouth was formed with the teeth. It's sort of genetic that every woman in the family starts getting the lines before they're even age 30, they start in. So sometimes people are just unlucky as far as genetics, and other times it's the repetitive movement. But the main um, cause of these lines that really triggers them to show up is photo damage. This, the sun damage will penetrate and damage collagen and elastic fibers. And there's also other environmental factors, smog, and certainly the nicotine that's in cigarettes. So this is a picture of the UVA radiation going into the skin. You know, this weekend, probably our beaches won't look quite as crowded as that, I hope. I hope people are gonna social distance. But the, you can see how the UVA rays in particular penetrate. That pink part on the diagram is the skin. There's the top epidermis and then that deeper pinkish part that's the dermis full of collagen. And look how those UVA rays go right into that collagen level. And that's what damages and ages the skin because we need collagen. Otherwise the skin is weak and it'll start to wrinkle. So, but on a deeper level, so we get that causes the superficial wrinkles, but what causes the sagging? That's again, a multi-layer process because we get aging in fat pads. The picture there with the yellow shows fat pads are kind of like little bean bags in, their fa in our face. They give us contour and shape. And as we age, they atrophy. They get smaller. And sadly, starting at about age 30, you lose a teaspoon of fat from your face every year. Um, and it can be up to a tablespoon. So by the time you're 40, you've lost a lot of fat. The muscles will also weaken around the fat and not hold the tissue as tightly. And then underneath is the bone. The bone is like the platform upon which all the soft tissue sits. But as we age, the bone remodels and also gets smaller. So our support structure underneath the soft tissue isn't holding things up as well, sort of like the framework of a house. Um, when we're young, the skin will project out in this curve. You'll hear the term OG curve. It refers to when you look sideways, how the cheek will kind of stick out. I don't know if I have a very good OG curve. I certainly do get some fillers to help, but um, we want to see that projection. And when we start to lose it, when we start to lose the fat pads, the muscle, um, the, the support of the muscle and the bone, then we get flattening of the cheeks, we get a downward descent, and everything seems to crowd around the mouth. That's why I'm spending time talking about the global changes we see on the face because the end result is this kind of, you see here in the last um, photo, things sort of fall towards the mouth and deepen the folds, cause the marionette lines, cause some sagging around the mouth. And you can see here, this is the jawbone. It's called the mandible. And this mandible gets much smaller as we age. So of course, it's not holding up the tissue as well as we would like it to. And then we just get more and more of this sagging around the mouth. Um, so don't get too depressed because there are things we can do about this. What I see though in patients is oftentimes everything is pretty good except around the mouth, like this patient. When we're going to uh, do a treatment, we often grade the patient's um, wrinkles with a wrinkle score. And her forehead, 
look how good her forehead is. The sides of her cheeks pretty good. The nose is pretty good. You can't see her eyes. But around the mouth, it's worse. And that is, I think, because of that way everything sort of falls around the mouth and all the movement around the mouth doesn't help. But um, what can we do about this? Because um, I have patients come in and they've looked in the rear view mirror of the car. It's really one of the worst mirrors to look in. And they just say, help, what can we do? And so what I typically do, we'll have you come in, and all our doctors do all these treatments, but we, uh, we all will do a consultation. And then we kind of look and feel and move the face and see what will treatment will be best for this patient. So nobody's, we don't put people on a cookie cutter and give everybody the same treatment. Each of you needs a little bit of a different treatment. So first I'm gonna talk about what, if you just said, just wipe out these wrinkles around my mouth, what can I do? Because I hate them. Well, you've got to do laser resurfacing because that will give you a long-term, very long-term result and really wipe them all out. Now we've got lots of different lasers. In our practice, we have 50 lasers. We have, um, some lasers are fractionated where just some of the beam comes into the face. Um, some are very light for maintenance, like the clear and brilliant. Um, some are a little deeper, but fractionated. None of those really get the wrinkles around the mouth. Those are the most stubborn ones, if I said. So if you really want to wipe them out, we've got to do fully ablative, the Ultra Plus Pulse CO2 laser. That's really the very best one for these wrinkles around the mouth. So what this does, and this is a, a patient of Dr. Fitzpatrick, probably this is 20 years ago, um, when the laser wasn't quite as good, but these wrinkles are so deep that you really couldn't possibly start to address this with anything else but the CO2. And you can see a huge improvement with that. So this laser has been around for 20 years. Um, but now the lasers are better, we understand. We don't get these white marks after laser anymore. Um, and they're still very, very strong. So this was one of the original resurfacing lasers. Then we got the lighter ones, but when we want to get these deep lines, we've got to go back to the big gun, which is the Ultra Plus CO2 laser. This is a fractionated laser, and Dr. Goldman did this patient. You can see it's a very nice result. This, if, if you don't have time to heal, you can get a nice improvement you could repeat this treatment. Um, and sometimes we'll take diluted Sculptra and use the laser to deliver that a little deeper and get even a better result. But it just won't last as long. And so the, the reason the CO2 is better, you get more tightening and a longer duration. But if you don't want to do that, we can do these lighter lasers and still get quite a good result. The reason the CO2 is the best is that it has this, see that big kind of coral colored zone there? I don't know if you can see my arrow. Can they see my arrow, Risa? If I move it on the screen, then that shows the zone of thermal damage that the CO2 causes. And that's the trick of that laser. It just, that you need that zone to get the collagen to shrink up. Other lasers might not go that deep in the skin, or the fractionated lasers actually go deeper than this, but they don't give you that zone, which gives you the contraction, the tightening, that gives the really good result for these types of lines that um, you can't really wipe out otherwise. So we might not get 100%, these little corner ones sometimes, oftentimes won't go 100%. These smile lines um, might not go 100%, but this is about the best you can get with a really good CO2. With this patient, we only did the CO2 around her mouth, and we did a lighter laser to the rest of the face. And that's a nice option as well when you really just want to work on this. Now, she's only two weeks out, so you can see a little bit more of the wrinkles. What we do after the laser, we get a good result, but then the collagen is produced more and more over the next six months. So you'll see at four months, 
we've gotten rid of almost all those wrinkles now just by letting the skin heal and make a lot more collagen in response to the laser treatment. We also did a little treatment to her neck. Um, so we combine these treatments oftentimes. Now this patient, she had a lot of sun damage and freckling. This is from her skin is very fair and probably sun exposure in her youth can cause all the sun damage. And you can see we can really wipe that out and get the face just so much tighter. And that's what's so beautiful about the CO2 laser. Again, just tighter around the lips. With a few more months, this little piece, these little wrinkles will go. And the, um, the skin will tighten. We call this our, our 10 year, we, uh, 10 years off with this laser. And here you can see how the laser is administered. This patient has had some sedation and she's completely numb. And what I'd like to show you is how I go right on the lip line. At the very end, I, I go over it again. And that helps us get a not really nice definition around the mouth as well. So she didn't have any filler. I just worked the laser here and to the side and all around the mouth. And then I do a little bit of lasering right on the lip to pop, you get a little pop on the lips and, and much tighter all around that. So this is why the CO2 is just wonderful. Now what's bad about the laser is the way you look the next day. It's very crusty and a little bit oozy. And so um, I'm gonna show you, but you might, might not, you might say, oh my God, I don't wanna look and have all that crusty stuff on. We have you do some soaks and then that is healed it's a lot better in about five days, you could go out with your mask on and no one would ever know. So now actually during this pandemic is not a bad time to do a laser because you can hide it, it'll, it'll be red and just a little bit um, noticeable, you can't put makeup on for 10 days. So a fully ablative laser is really a 10 day recovery time, maybe a little less if you wear a mask and we only do the strong part in the center of the face. So we always want to back up our laser with good products. So we get most of the result from the procedure. The cells are stimulated to grow collagen for another several months. And then we use really good skincare to get even the best result. If you do nothing else after listening to this lecture, at least wear sunscreen every day using an oxidant in the morning and some growth factors or retinoid at night and that will give you a good healthy skin as well. It, skincare won't take lines away but they will really help maintain your skin. Okay well let's say you don't have any downtime at all and you need an instant fix and um, yeah, you just don't want to do a laser right now. Well then fillers are actually pretty good for most of these problems. There's no downtime except you might get a bruise. And we have a laser to help with bruising the next day. It makes it go away much faster. So there's, there's not too much downtime and lasers give you a quick fix. We can use different fillers for different problems. For the very fine lines, we want to use a lightweight filler like Bellatero, Vella, Wrestling Silk. For deeper lines, you might use like these folds here, Restylane, Restylane Refine, Juvederm, Volor, Radius. So each person needs a little bit different filler in the line. It's sort of like an artist having a palette of different colors. We're treating wrinkles with a palette of different fillers and each one has a wonderful niche. Like here, you see these very fine lines that this patient has, and they're softened with Bellatero. If you put a thick filler in this line, it's going to make a ridge and it's gonna get bumpy and it won't look good. So you, on a real thin line like that, you have to wear, use a soft, soft filler like Bellatero. It's an excellent filler for that. For these etched in lines, that's one of the best uses for Bellatero. This lightweight filler though will last probably no more than six months. 
Um, but it's a, a very nice filler for around this area. This patient could benefit from a full resurfacing around her eyes and forehead, but for now, maybe it's just not feasible. She can just look younger. If you make the mouth area look younger, do a little um, Botox or Zeomin up there, um, it'll look a lot, she'll look a lot younger. Now, here's why I hate when people get too much filler around the mouth. When you put, sometimes I see, now this is exaggerated, this is poor Goldie Hahn, but someone put a whole bunch of filler above her lip. We call this part the white upper lip. And it just looks awful. That's what gives that duck lip look. Maybe she had some wrinkles there, but this is just way too much filler, too thick a filler, and we want to avoid that overdone look at all costs. At least I do. I hate my patients to look like that. So if we need to fill someone that's already a little older and has a little bit of thickening of the lip, then I do skin boosting. This is taking a filler and diluting it and using a cannula, that's not a needle, but you see I put a little numbing, so I promise this doesn't hurt, and I just fan this watery filler throughout all these lines, and it will bind water. It's much better already. You can see the side not treated. It's much smoother here. After I do my boosting, I'll take a little 32 gauge needle and, and top off those deepest lines but the cannula will give a smoothing effect to the whole area without enlarging or causing jowling because you can just get too much filler around the mouth. To avoid that, skin boosting is great. And at least it's something I have done for myself and I think it lasts even a little bit longer, like eight to 10 months. So skin boosting is sort of the new thing we did. Now for fillers of the lower for, for sagging, we need to use a different type of strategy, volumizing the face and using some very special techniques that I like to use. Um, this is how we may try to lift this kind of draggy look around the lower face. And she's got a heavyish face. You might think, why put filler in someone who already has a full face? It's because we want to lift up and give her a lifted look. And we can do this by adding filler along the cheeks, jawline, a little bit to the chin area. With nothing in the lip, the lips can look better just by putting filler around this area. So I'll show you here, the filler was placed in sort of a, we call it a flagpole, to pop up certain areas and then making lines of filler along the jawline um, and along these other areas that may uh, need a softer correction. So she, you might think she could use a little bit more there, but if I do that, her lower face from the front will look too wide. So there's an art to figuring out what will look the very best on this patient without and, with, and still maintaining a nice balance of the face and looking a lot prettier. We got some lifting. Let me just go back to that for a minute. We got some lifting of the neck simply by placing filler in her face. So that that's, tells you that the fat and all the soft tissue that fell down caused the drooping around the mouth. Here we can do the same thing with your own body's fat. I took a little fat under her neck and placed it in the chin and some in her cheeks and jawline. So you see we can build up a more youthful jawline and, and support the lips and mouth and uh, marionette areas. With fat, we do not get those little tiny etched in lines. So again, we can do a combination treatment and fill in with a little Bellatero or wrestling silk in that area. Now my picket fence technique is, I'm not going to show you, but I do have this on my Instagram, is to support, there's some vertical ligaments in the side of the face. And if we put filler on either side of them, 
they start to fall down like a fence. And if we make them stand back up straight, I, that's why I call it the picket fence. And we can get some nice lifting. Oh, I thought I put a before and after in that, but I guess not. Let me see if I'll go, let me look again. Maybe not, but you can, again, look at my Instagram, at, I think Kimberly Butterwick, and uh, you'll see a result there. And this person here happens to be me getting a little bit of a secret lift along the hairline and behind. And that's when we don't want the face to get too big, but we want to pull back. My little secret lift is a good one. And here's the after. <laughs> um, so now besides fillers, and that you have to do regularly every maybe six to 12 months, we do fillers sometimes once a year, uh, you know, a good number of fillers, three or four, and then at the six month point, maybe just one to top it off. Um, but another way to go is to tighten this lower face and cheek with devices. And we do have a lot of devices here in our practice. Um, we've got the Althera. This is microfocused ultrasound to heat the tissue. We have radio frequency devices, and there must be at least 50, maybe 100 different types of radio frequency devices. So many of them are very good and very similar. Thermage is the original one and they have new innovations with their technology that tightens the skin. There's bipolar that doesn't go as deep. Um, and then there's now microneedling with energy in the tips of the needle. That's what you need to help with wrinkles and tightening. And microneedling is very nice. We have the intracell device. And then there's radio frequency little probes that actually go under the skin to tighten it. Now you're probably thinking, well, how do I know which one I want? You don't really know because you're not aware of what every device can do. That's why we have to look at you and see which one of these is really going to be the best one for you. Um, but all of them work on the same principle. They take this collagen molecule, that's a triple helix, and they, um, when you heat it to 65 degrees, some of the bonds will release and the collagen will reform and become a smaller molecule. It'll shrink. And that's, if it shrinks deeply, that tightens the skin. So that's what the principle is. So with all therapy, um, that's a device that has multiple lines on the face. And um, I do this or the thermage about uh, every year and a half to two years to just keep this area tight. Um, and we can um, treat that. It takes, this is thermage. It takes about four months or so for this to get as tight as it will. These devices won't pick up everything, but we can put a little filler there to supplement. So the nice thing about these is they'll keep the elasticity in your skin. So when you put your face down, the face won't fall. And this thermage is nice for maybe younger patients. The Althera goes a little deeper, but it hurts more. So we have to use more in the way of pain management. Oftentimes we use now the um, nitrous. Uh, we have this very nice device. You just hold a little tube and breathe in. And I tell you, it really makes a lot of difference. So um, that's a nice new thing we have. If a patient has a lot of this wrinkling and doesn't want to have any downtime, we can do the radio frequency microneedling, the intracell. Now we do need to do a series of treatments with the microneedling. With Thermage and Othera, it's usually just one treatment. And the good thing about all of these is there's no downtime. So you, you get it and the next day you look fine. But we can't get this much improvement on lines unless we do a series. So if though there's tightening that's needed on the neck as well with a little bit of fat, 
Then I like the thermi tight because this will give you some nice tightening in here as well as tightening here. But if we don't need so much there, then I might use just Othera or Thermage up here. And you'll notice the fine lines don't go with these. This is only for the sagging that we see, for the connective tissue and the sagging to make everything tighter. Another thing that's kind of new that we can do, and I, I'm, not, I'm, I'm wrapping up pretty soon in case you want to know, is we can treat these jowls just with Kybella. I like Kybella for little tiny areas. For a big neck, I think it's too much trouble. But when I just put a little bit of Kybella in these jowls, we might have to do it two or three times to get it to shrink up. But when you make less fat there, it will lift the jowl up. So Kybella, that's a new treatment for that area. It's actually not one of the FDA approved indications, but it's very safe and it just takes a little bit of product to get there. Now lastly, if we really want to lift up and see it very noticeable, I think these um, suture lifts are quite good. And what we do is just uh, make a little bit of numbing, insert a, a thread or suture into the skin and pull up. The threads that I like the best are the silhouette insta-lift because you get the most um, uplift and it lasts the longest, about a year and a half. So you can see this little jowl, you can see the neck. Um, this person has a heavier face and maybe has had an ultrasound the year prior that didn't do all that she wanted. And so we can pull up the rest with the sutures. Now, could she have a facelift? Maybe, but a lot of patients just don't want a facelift. They're afraid of looking different. They're afraid of having a procedure. So I think the um, insta-lift is really great um, for people that don't want to have a lift, or she's, she's too young and almost perfect to have a lift. But we get, look at how the cheek lifted some volume up towards the eye. That takes the volume away from the mouth area and pu pushes it up and out. So it repositions the tissue away from the mouth. And that's, instead of treating sagging around her mouth, we treat everything else, and that's how we get the result there. One thing about suture lifts, people say, well, how long do they last? There are PDO threads, um, such as Euro threads, Nova threads, those won't last that long, sometimes six, only six months, maybe 10 months at the most. Um, the silhouette insulift lasts about a year and a half, a little bit more if we do some other things. Like I had mine about three years ago, but then I had the little secret lift to, fin to lift a year ago. So we can rotate through these different things when you're tightening, when you're adding some threads, when you're adding a little um, filler. And all of it is to keep our facial shape young and sort of uplifted. And what they found in the only study that's been done on any of these threads regarding duration is that two years later with the InstaLift, 25% of patients decided, you know what, I think I wanted a facelift. I just have too much sagging. 25% repeated the procedure. They were very happy with it. And that's, I would say, I'm closer to 50%. People who've had it once say, gee, that was really good and you know, so easy. There's very little downtime, maybe a three-day weekend with it. Um, and 15% still had their effect at one and a half years. So these are a nice um, device to use in our stable of treatments that we have for this problem. And like I say, combination therapy with fillers and devices really give us lovely and um, very good results. You don't ever want to overdo one treatment, too many fillers, too much lasering. It's nice to rotate through the different ones. So we've come full circle now, and I'll just summarize a little bit so we have enough time for questions. Just let me 
go over one more time. For surface wrinkles, those etched in lines, we don't have a lot of options if we really want them to go away. The best thing is that CO2 laser. We can use lighter lasers in a series and get a good, good to very good result, but the best with lasering is the CO2. Or with, if you don't want to have any downtime, fine line fillers are quite good and um, quite effective. As long as we don't make overfill with fillers or use the wrong too thick a filler, like poor Goldie Hahn. Um, for, for sagging and laxity, we can use devices like the Altherapy, Thermage, Thermitite if the neck is involved, the Intracell microneedling if there's lots of little fine lines all over in a series. There's no downtime with those. And lastly, if we want to lift up all the tissues, we can volumize, secret lift, picket fence. We can remove some fat from the jowls and we can lift up with the silhouette and silhouette. So I think that about does it, Risa, what do you think? Sorry, I was on mute. Yes, thank you so much, Dr. Butterwick. That was fabulous. Um, right now, before we move into the Q&A session, um, I just want to remind you guys in the bottom of your screen is a little box that should say Q&A. You can start inputting questions there. A couple of you have already. Um, anyone else that now has questions, please ask. Um, and then Dr. Butterwick, her information is on the slide right now. As she said, we are very excited that we're now open and available for appointments and treatments. So please jot down this information. And then Dr. Butterwick, while we do the Q&A, could you close the presentation so we can see you? Oh, sure. Better? Okay, perfect. So while that is happening, um, here are the first question. What is the treatment of choice for nasal labial fold? Oops, hold on. Oh, how's that? Perfect. Okay. Okay, good. so what is the treatment of choice for nasal labial folds? Ah. I think, you know, nasal labial folds are a little tricky because even if you have a facelift, it doesn't pull them all the way. So what we usually do is, is start with some fillers, like a little filler here in the fold, but more importantly, you don't want to crowd the mouth because that's not pretty. We may put some filler back here to lift up and filler here. So I might take one syringe and put half of it in the fold itself and have on the upper outer cheek to pull that fold up. So that's really um, very effective. If for some reason we don't want to use fillers, sometimes people have such a deep fold, you could put a pencil in them. They're just super deep and that's just the genetic way the face looks. And fillers don't tend to be as effective if it's, if it's a super deep fold. Then I actually like the insulift because we can take that tissue and just pull it up and out. Um, so I think that's most effective. Am I boring you, Risa? I saw that yawn. <laughs> Sorry. No. So or maybe you just had lunch. I understand. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. That was helpful. So here's another one. For the horizontal line that can form in the area below the nose and above the top <sighs> lip when one yes. smiles, is the CO2 laser resurfacing the best option? Uh, yes, that, that will get that line. And you know, that's just some people have it, some people don't. I actually get that line too. I don't know if mine shows in this light, I hope not. <laughs> but um, it's from the way the, the lip smiles, it'll come up when you smile. So you'll get this little line right there. So the CO2 laser would definitely help that. We can actually use a little bit of Botox. So especially if there's a gummy smile associated with it where the lip goes up too far and shows too much of our teeth. So um, a little bit of Botox can be helpful. And we can also use filler in that line. That Bellotero plus a little bit of Botox would take it right away. Very interesting. Okay. After CO2 laser resurfacing has cleared up, is it okay to use Retin-A around the mouth area? For sure, and I encourage that. So it takes a while before the skin can tolerate Retin-A after a, a more aggressive laser. 
It usually isn't till a month that we can start it. What I typically do is at about 10 days, start some growth factors, either the um, Skin Medica TNS or the Callison growth factors are excellent. There's um, some other very nice products. Those are usually tolerated right away after a laser and that will stimulate collagen. But then at a month, we also add Retin-A or Retinol and though we'll use both growth factors and retinol to get the maximum growth of collagen after a laser. So the heat from the laser triggers the cells to make a lot more collagen as if you're 18 years old. And it'll do that for about six months. So during that time, especially the retinoids, Retin-A, it's a great collagen stimulator. So for sure, we wanna use that. If you use Retin-A at night, you always want to use sunscreen in the morning. In fact, always use sunscreen every day, even if you're inside, because guess what? Those darn UVA rays penetrate window glass. So even while I'm sitting against this window here, I could be getting some UVAs damaging my skin, causing wrinkles. So wearing a good broad spectrum sunscreen every day is very important. Okay. Um, are the smoker lines only for people that smoke? And if not, how can I prevent them? Um, yes, yeah, sadly, it's, I have so many people with, you know, they, they're called in quotes smoker line, but I would say most people didn't get them. They don't smoke, but it's drinking from straws, drinking from little water bottles, um, whistling a lot, just having a mouth that purses a lot. Some people, when they're tense at night, they say they wake up, they're, they're, they're pursing their lips. So um, smokers' lines can um, be from movement, but also, you know, 12-year-olds uh, don't have smoker line. It takes movement, repetitive for years, plus sun damage. So um, was the question, can we, what was the question again besides? How to prevent them. Oh, prevent them. Well, don't. <laughs> don't drink uh, out of little bottles. Don't um, don't drink out of straws. Um, if for prevention, if you think you have the type of mouth that's going to get them, or all your aunts and your mom has them, a teeny bit of Botox, and I mean it only takes a little bit, can reduce the tendency to purse. And sort of like when we do Botox here, it prevents those lines from ever forming. Um, and if you're young and you're thinking about this, a little bit of Botox there can really prevent them from happening. So that would be my first um, line of prevention, that sunscreen and a good skincare regimen. Very interesting. I might have to do that myself. Um, okay, would a product with growth factor in the mouth area help prevent wrinkles and sagging? Yes, and that uh, it, it will help in the long run. I always tell people when you get on a good skincare program, the skin will look kind of smoother, a little, little brighter, more, um, more light reflex, more radiant, but it, you won't really see a big change in wrinkles or big problems. That's not what skincare regimens do. You're in it for the long run when you use a skincare regimen. In 10 years, your skin will look way better than your friends that never used anything because you've prevented a lot of problems, um, you've taken care of your skin all the time, and it really pays off in the long run. Um, and one thing I forgot to mention about the Botox that I wanted to is when we do that little bit of Botox there, you get a teeny bit of flip up in the lip. It's called the lip flip. And you can see that online, it's kind of popular right now. And it just gives a tiniest bit of cute for the lips. So that's the other good thing to get with that. But growth factors in themselves will fight the tendency to get smokers lines and, and wrinkles. They won't prevent it. They're not strong enough to get it all the way. That's why we usually need a little bit of help. Some like if you're in your you know late 20s, early 30s, you might want to start with a good skincare program and a light laser once a year to continue to stimulate collagen. 
like the Clear and Brilliant Fraxel, like an IPL. There's um, several good systems that can be utilized to give you the most collagen in your skin to offset the breakdown that occurs naturally as we age and with early sun exposure. Um, so all of that will help. So if you go to your high school reunion when you're 40, you'll be like, oh, she still looks really good. <laughs> okay, well, I think that helps answer this next question. It was, if I get a combination treatment with lasers and injectables, what type of maintenance would be needed? And I, I, your answer is what you just said, right? With IPLs and ongoing? Right, well, if, if you did a combination, let's say we do a, a big laser on you, I would do that first and you probably wouldn't really need any fillers for a long time after that. Um, unless we also do want to lift up the, the, the cheeks with some fillers and laser, that's a wonderful combination. So if you do a big CO2 laser, we usually don't do another one for 10 years, but we might do some light lasers, like you said, the IPL, Clear and Brilliant. I certainly do a light laser once a year I probably do them two or three times a year, but my big laser was 20 years ago. So you, you don't need to do a lot of those big lasers, but if you've already got some significant lines, the big lasers are great. That makes a lot of sense. Okay, guys, we have time for a few more questions and there's a couple more in here. So please, any last questions, get them in. Um, so you mentioned callosum. So we have two questions around it. One said, are you referring to the pink callosum serum? Yes, that, that pink watery serum, callosum is from a red deer and it, the growth factors in it can stimulate a lot of good collagen. So I, I personally, I like the pink watery serum better than they have a cream as well, but either one is good. And some people use both. Okay, and then the next question about that is, is there much of a difference between the TNS serum and the callosum? Well, they're, they're different origin for their growth factors. So probably each company would claim theirs is better, but um, the um, Skin Medica growth factors come from human cells. And actually, you know, many years ago, Dr. Goldman, Dr. Fitzpatrick and I um, developed that skincare line. And there was a, com a biotech company in town that was growing fibroblasts and capturing the growth factors. And we said, why don't we make that into a cream? And that's where that technology started. Skin Medica is coming out with a brand new TNS. So um, that's gonna be available probably in the next month or two. That's a more elegant uh, product because that one never did smell that great, but the new one is, is really nice. Um, it has over a hundred growth factors. Now the Calisum also has hundreds of growth factors. It's very good too. So um, I don't think there's, um, you know, there hasn't been a head to head study of them that I'm aware of, um, but um, both are really good one or the other, whichever one's on sale that month. <laughs> okay, and we sell both at our practice. So if anyone wants to try them or see the difference, you're welcome to come in and smell and touch and feel both of them right in our right. waiting room. So that can exactly. Yeah. Um, okay, two more questions. One, what are your thoughts on a surgical lip lift? Ah, um, now what the, what the question is, a surgical lip lift is taking the lip and shortening the distance between the nose and the upper lip. As we age, and it's because of the bony changes I showed you, the bone tips back, so the lip drops down and gets longer and longer. So by the time you're like 80, it's really long. And so what the surgeon, this is a, something I don't do, plastic surgeons would do it, they make a little cut at the base of the nose and they lift the lip up. And I think that is a good option for people that have quite a bit of distancing. We can shorten it with some fillers actually at the base of the nose in this area called the piriform fossa. We can flip the lip up to give 
the visual illusion that it's shorter, but sometimes if it's really long, surgery is good. But I caution to be very careful because if they overdo it, it looks like the patient is snarling. It looks horrible. I have seen some bad lip lifts that I don't like, or sometimes the scar will show, which is again horrible. So you have to be um, sure that you're seeing a really good plastic surgeon that has a lot of experience and ask to see some photos and express those concerns. You know, please don't overdo it because I don't want to have it, if it's lifted too high in the center, then it looks like a little rabbit. So it can not look good. Um, but uh, there are some, I've seen some very nice ones as well. Okay, so I'm sure um, that was an anonymous question, but whoever asked it or anyone that's listening, um, Dr. Butterwick, you know, you can always have a consultation with her. She can go over the treatment options she can offer and she could definitely refer you. There are some plastic surgeons um, that she's confident in. That she right, can. but also with that CO2 laser, if we look back at the photos, which it's gone right now, but you get a shortening of that distance because of the shrinkage those patients where I shot, saw the lips look better, there's a lot, when, when I do the laser, I take a little square like you might have seen. In the first pass, the square might be size eight. In the second pass, there's less distance. It might be size six. I see immediate shrinkage, particularly in that area. So if it's a really long lip, the laser won't, won't be enough. But if it's not too bad, we get beautiful tightening with that CO2 laser. Okay, that makes sense. All right, last question. Oh, good. I'm in my 20s and this presentation <laughs> has made me now paranoid about my mouth and wrinkling. Should I start getting fillers and laser treatments now? In your 20s, it's not too early because probably when you were 12 or 13, you're out at the beach or uh, getting a little bit too much sun, and now is a perfect time to start really taking care of your skin. So getting on a good skincare regimen would be wonderful. Doing a really light, clear and brilliant laser would be excellent. You may be a little young to need fillers at this point, unless you wanted to get a fun look on the lips. Um, you probably don't have any lines that would be filled. So I'll, I'll save you some of that for now for when you're 35, um, but, uh, but certainly you're not too young and I would really advise taking care of yourself now will pay off incredibly. Sometimes I see women that have used um, good skincare since their early 20s and now they're like 65, 70. The skin still looks so good because they've had all those years of taking care of their skin. So I would please start now. Okay, great. All right. Well, I thank you, Dr. Butterwick, so much for your time. I hope you all thank found you, very <laughs> helpful. This record, this webinar is being recorded. So we will be sending out the recording if you wanted to re-listen to it again or to share with anyone who you think might be interested. Of course, it'll be available on our website and it was it's also streaming live right now on Facebook. Um, oh, thank you for some people are coming in and saying thank you now. Um, and so if anyone's interested, Dr. Butterwick is available for in-person consultations. We still are offering virtual consultations if you feel safer at home, although our office has very strict protocols now, so I hope you do feel safe coming in. And otherwise, um, I thank everyone for listening and thank you, Dr. Butterwick. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye.